The Windows editing environment provides you with two ways to process your audio material. First, there is real-time processing. This is generally used when applying effects from within the VST channel mixer. The second method, which is offline processing, is a non-real-time process. Offline processing is used for more specific processing tasks, such as trimming, time stretching, pitch shifting, reversing, and various other useful functions. These tasks are performed on specific audio events in your project using menu options. Once the process is applied, you can then listen to your results. In this movie tutorial, we're going to look over the offline processing abilities of Nuendo and learn how to incorporate them within your projects. Real-time processing is handled within the VST channel mixer. Any insert or send effects that you use are using real-time processing power. This provides instant feedback just as you would expect with real hardware-based effects. Since offline processing is not real-time, these tasks are accessed by selecting a specific audio event in your project and either choosing the process menu from the main audio menu or right-clicking on a PC or control-clicking on a Mac to bring up the context menu. Once an option is chosen, the process is applied and then you can hear your results. Since we've already gone over the methods for applying and using real-time audio effect plugins within the mixing topic, let's spend a little time learning about offline processing and some of the advantages it offers. Offline processing functions are available to you by selecting an audio event or a specific range of an audio event and using right-click or control-click to choose the process category from within the context menu. Here we see a list of various tools to choose from. Each function has a specific use and purpose. For example, pitch shifting, which allows you to alter the pitch of any given audio event and process it with superb clarity and with hardly any artifacts. One of the more common tools is reverse, allowing you to simply change the direction in which the audio plays back. When choosing any of these offline processes, one of two things may happen. First, if the process does not require any user input, and it will simply do the task and apply it to the audio. If a process requires user input, then you are provided with an editor dialog box that gives you specific parameters for adjusting and setting the process. A function unique to Nuendo is the ability to use plugins for offline processing. You can use the very same plugins you use for real-time processing in the VST channel mixer as an offline process. You may wonder what's the point in that? Well, this provides you a powerful way to apply effects only to specific areas or events within a project without having to worry about channel routings, grouping, or altering the entire track. I'll give you an example of this in just a moment. Out of the various processes and options you have, no matter which task you choose, you are always prompted if you are altering an event that has been copied to other areas of the project. Nuendo will simply ask you whether you want to apply the process to all the referenced events or just the one you have selected. If you're not happy with any of the effects or processes you've applied, then you can access the offline process history for any specific event and change them as needed. An important rule about offline processing is, it is a non-destructive function. This means that it never alters the original audio material that is in the pool. Because of this, the offline process history gives you tremendous control over all the effects you have applied to an event. The offline process history is located in the audio menu. Once selected, a new dialog window appears. Here you can see a list of the various processes I've applied to this audio event. Modify allows you to make changes to any given process in the list. Replace allows you to replace a process with any of the available choices. You can even change processes that are in the middle of the list. Once you're done, Nuendo will reapply all the processes again to the original audio material giving you the new results. What's incredible about this tool is that Nuendo keeps this offline process history for every individual piece of audio you process. So essentially, you can undo or change any process on any given audio event at any given time within your project. The days of making mistakes that can't be corrected are over. Not to mention it gives you the flexibility to change your mind about certain processes should you find that later on within the project, a certain process just doesn't work anymore based on how your song or project has progressed. If you're an artist, then you know how easy it is to constantly change your mind.
To further enhance the offline process history, you have a save as batch command. This allows you to create a batch job, or what I like to call a preset from the specific list of processing commands you have for any given event. What this means is that if you used a specific set of tools to process an event and you find that you want to process other audio files in the same way, then you can save that process list as a preset and call it up at any time to apply it to other audio events. This is a great time-saving feature when you have a handful of audio events that all require the same type of processing to be applied to them. Now that we have a good understanding of offline processing, here's an example of how to make use of it within a project by applying individual effects to specific sections of an audio event. Here I have a song up and I'm right at the end section of a breakdown. I'm not sure I like how the beat just kind of drops off abruptly. So I'm thinking we could add an effect to the last snare in the bar to allow it to trail off into the breakdown segment. To do this, first we'll cut the last bar of the beat and trim it so that the snare is the last piece of audio to play. Now we'll zoom in and isolate the snare as a separate event by cutting it. Now we right click on this snare audio event and choose a reverb plugin from my list of plugin effects. We'll make our settings. And notice, I'll choose the More option so that I can determine how long Nuendo needs to trail the effect in order to capture the entire length of the reverb. Then I'll slightly adjust the wet dry settings. Next, we'll preview it to make sure it has just the right amount of reverb. That sounds pretty good, so let's go ahead and apply it. That's it. Now that it's applied, you'll notice the event has been extended to contain the new reverb trail effect. Now let's back up the transport a bit and take a listen to see how this works. Perfect. That added a nice space at the end of the beat and makes it trail into the breakdown nicely. So in closing, although real-time processing is one of Nuendo's most powerful abilities, you can see just how important offline processing can be for any type of project you're working on. With the ability to perform surgical editing of effects on any audio event and the ability to keep track of every step with the offline process history, you'll find offline processing to be a great tool for everything from corrective tasks to heavy experimentation.